<laughs> hey everybody and welcome back. <laughs> Where are we doing that? <laughs> hey everybody and welcome back to Elden Ring. Last time we wrapped up the upper shelf of Shifra River, though we did not explore everything in there just yet. We did everything that I wanted to do for the time being. And we ended by killing a poor ancestor spirit. Another one. There were two. And we killed both of them. We have committed ancestor spirit genocide. This time, I just rested at the site of grace in order to set the time of day, and I have found out... Melina has something to say to us, apparently. So let's hear it. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? I must have missed this when I visited this room earlier in the game. In Marika's own words, the Earth Tree governs all. The choice is thine. Become one with the Order. Or divest thyself of it. To wallow at the fringes. A powerless upstart. Is that yet another reference to the choice between Grand Lift or Tunnel, Ruin Strewn Precipice? That would be so funny if it was, and it was like America acknowledging it. And the, the Grand Lift is Order, and the Precipice isn't. Screw you. <laughs> I passed the time and Melina got bored of waiting. We have come so far on this journey. And you want to know how I can tell? It's because all the exercise we've been having by running around and killing all these bosses has actually finally started to show its effects. <laughs> I went to the mirror in the round table hold and set myself to be muscular, which is something I like to do in these games whenever we hit around, like, level 70. And we have hit that. We are currently level 74. So I think this was a good time to do this. We have gotten a much stronger. Though, not that much stronger in, like, actual strength, more stronger in mind still. Y you understand. And I think it would have the same changes regardless. It probably wouldn't. Anyway. Enough dallying. Enough dawdling? Dallying and dawdling. Both of those work. We have both halves of the Dectus Medallion. So... Oh, Grand Lift of the one named Dectus, deliver me unto greater heights. I don't know if quoting Godric was the best idea, but that's just, that's just what I wanted to do. Isn't it awesome? Oh man, I love how this place looks. It's like autumn, but now even the grass is joining in on the fun. Except, you know, it's supposed to be gold and not red and death, but well, whatever, close enough. Right away, we have Raya here. I've been waiting for you. I knew you had the stuff of champions. I hereby invite you to the Volcano Manor. Take my hand and have audience with my mistress. I am going to refuse for now. If you do this, if you take her hand, she will teleport you to Volcano Manor. 
But for me personally, I'd rather discover Volcano Manor on my own first, so sorry. Very well. Speak to me again once you are ready. You will find me here. You can come back here and do it if you if you change your mind. I see a sight of grace this way, so this way I shall go. Welcome to Altus Plateau. I describe this place as just kind of limgrave, but harder and golden. There's nothing like too huge. There's no like giant landmark about it, except for you know the giant walls over there and the giant glowing golden tree we've been seeing in the background the entire game. But no, the Yurt tree is more a landmark of the lands between as a whole, not just this place. I want to rest at this grace to see if we trigger anything special. I, oh, yeah, we do. Melina has something to say yet again. I'm glad I did that. The Erd Tree is close. Only a little further till the foot of the Erd Tree. And the accord is fulfilled. It takes me back. I was born at the foot of the Erd Tree, where Mother gave me my purpose. Though now... Everything is lost to me. I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live, burned and bodiless. Was that your ascertaining? Is your ascertaining done now? All right, well, I still can't do anything with you, so I think I'll just get up and move on. We'll start by going down the road here, although, actually, there might be some interesting stuff to see over there first. Yeah, let's go over here first. I can't remember what I wanted to say. I wanted to say something, and now I've, uh, I've forgotten it. This happens a lot. This happens all the time. What item do we have here? Lightning-proof dried liver. Protects you from lightning damage. Hello, our first enemies on the on the Altus Plateau. And, uh, yep, there sure are demi-humans dying in two hits, and... Well, I would say barely damaging me. That was a decent amount taken out of my health. But then I just one-shot you guy with... One-shot you with a simple jump attack. And you're supposed to be the stronger variant, too. Actually, this guy might be the, the true stronger variant. Yeah, a little bit. He, he probably wouldn't have been one-shot by the thing. Altus Bloom. I don't remember what this crafts right off the top of my head, but we have it now. Actually, I could check it out real quick. Golden tinge flower from a succulent plant that blooms on the Altus Plateau, said to be a funeral flower in an era long past before the Erd Tree grew. Yet, it blooms in the land of the Erd Tree, as we've heard it described as. Hello, sir. Do you want to feel some ice? You want to feel? You want to have a brain freeze? I got a brain freeze for you right here. Okay. Eventually, you'll be brain frozen. There you go. 404, damage not found. More like enemy not found at this point. That wasn't the killing blow, though. It, w it would be great if it was. Golden Roa re replaces the usual Roa fruit, and I think you can use that to create a better version of Roa Raisin for Torin. So we may as well. Yeah, similarly to Kaelid, Altus Plateau does not have Roa fruit in it, so our days of uh, trying to work towards getting maximum Roa fruit possible are over. Especially since, you know, I used all of the Roa fruit on Roa Raisin once we achieved 999 and started storing it. Man, we got all kinds of demi humans. We had a chief right outside, and then we have a tiny one. There's a lot of variety in here. That's the third time I've been hit this entire time, though. Oh boy. As a YouTuber John Wolf once said, it is demi-human nap time at the Lux Ruins here. That's basically it. All these guys were sleeping before I came in here and woke them up. Or rather, they woke themselves up by their others screaming as I kill them, which, you know, is a reasonable thing to scream about to your friends. Three string? That was set loot, I think. I don't think an enemy dropped that. That was set loot in the middle of these ruins, and it was three string. Incredible. Um, you know, th string isn't the most common thing, like, only demi-humans drop it, but still. Okay, that, this is the type that tries to flee from you. Emphasis on try, because it's not gonna succeed. Hi, ah, you have golden eyes, give me those. Wow, oh my god, over a thousand roots for killing a demi-human. <laughs> oh, man. Don't make me laugh, game. Where did it go? Did it go down somewhere? And apparently that was one group of them that I just killed. Like, the the little guy and the bigger guy there? Was that, was that it? Hello? Golden rune level 3. That's better than any of the loot I found here so far. Well, if I could find the, where the Scarab decided to run off to, then I think that would be even better loot. But 
It seems like the scarab just vanished. I'm not seeing it or hearing it. Well, what can we do? Apart from reload and kill it again, but then that would also respawn all these guys, so I'm gonna wait to do that. Is this actually gonna kill both of you? Okay, it barely didn't kill you. Why did it kill the other one? I guess sneak damage, maybe? And that made the difference? Oh, didn't mean to fall off of there. Look at those weird, weird looking rock structures. Those look like, those look like all the rock ramps out in Liernia, things like this. And I don't really know why those are there. Those are just interesting protru protrusions out of the ground. I had a really hard time pronouncing that word for some reason. That's why there was a cut there. Probably. I may have added one. I mean, it, it, so it would sound really awkward if I didn't add one. So I probably added one. Uh, that's the hard stuff with my videos is like... <laughs> I make so many mistakes in my speech, I basically have to cut all the time, and it can sometimes make my videos feel a bit discombobulated. I'm sorry about that, but it's just what I choose to do. Because I feel like... I don't know. Is, is like, is rapid cuts necessarily better or worse than keeping the awkward speech mess up that I had in the video? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I got, I just choose to go for the cutting option every single time. There's a side of grace down here, not too far away from the uh, other one, except... Or actually, is it? I, I guess it is. This is known as the Erdtree Gazing Hill, and there's actually something important to find here. Not just this golden seed. Hang on, can I... Can I? Can I do it? Can I do the thing? Can I do the thing? Yes, I can finally add a charge to flask. It's been forever. Okay, we're gonna put eight flasks into my flask bar thing. I don't really know. <laughs> into my pocket. There, <laughs> there we go. That was the right word. And then we can come over here and meet a very hidden and obscure and hard to find NPC, Millicent, who we have saved from Kaled back in uh, episode 19, I want to say. She was here in the Church of the Plague, having been infested with Scarlet Rot, and we actually helped cure it for her, and now she can be found here. Way out of the way of the path. But, you know. Ah, we meet again. In truth, it's been smooth sailing for me. The Scarlet Rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey, though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. Now I'm tracing the path Melania took after unleashing the power of the Scarlet Rot during her battle with General Radan in the Kaled Wilds. I should like to meet her. This vanished woman. I think she's in the north, in the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree. Ah, oh, beyond the Erd Tree. I think we can actually see them from here, too. We can see those lands. Look at that. Look at all that stuff over there, above the big old building walls. All right, well, I guess we'll be meeting her, too, eventually. I mean, I usually end up meeting every important character in this game, in these games. Do you? I'm actually not really sure about that anymore, but in this game, at least, I think most of the characters whose names are referenced you get to meet at some point. We're not done with the ruins, because as you may know, we didn't find the cellar, so I'd like to get back to doing that in a, in a brief moment. Which means I've got to drive past this camp, and then... How do I get out of here? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, uh, up this hill, away from that ballista. We'll check out this camp afterwards, but I for now, I want to get back on track and get back into the ruins. Okay, yes, this is the main road where we came from, and it is worth noting that I have... Because I have not... I have yet to mention it. Those two golems outside of the uh, Grand Lift are peaceful. They do not attack you unless you attack them. Oh, well, I think we would be able to make a better version of Roa Raisin if we had the recipe for it. These freaking cookbooks, man. You get a new material and then, oh wait, you can't actually do anything with it because you need the freaking cookbook. I swear there was a golden Roa Raisin you could make and that I had some of, but I guess I used it. All right, the scarab is in my sights. It will not escape us again. All right, as simple as that. Ash of War, shield, crash. So you can blue screen of death your own shield for a combat advantage, I guess. To win the shield and charge forward while maintaining guard. Weaker enemies will be shoved backwards. It can even be staggered. Uh, I was close. That's almost... You, 
You crashed the enemy. Okay, you use the shield to blue screen of death the enemy, not the shield. There we go. That was my that was my only mistake. We have a boss in this ruin, and I no, it is something we fought before, but not as a boss. Elden Ring really likes to do this for some reason. It is a demi-human queen. We fought one of these in the ruins down in Weeping Peninsula. I think it was just the demi-human forest ruins, and it was not a boss there. I think here, this boss version has, like, more attacks. Well, it threw away the staff, and the one down in Weeping Peninsula didn't do that, from what I remember, so yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've noticed the health bar. Yeah, I'm doing a ton of damage to this thing. I think, from what I remember, Altus Plateau is ever so slightly easier than Kaelid, Southern Kaelid, but there are exceptions to that. Just general Altus Plateau is. Okay, uh, do 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 do. Oh! Got, got smacked. Got smacked upside the head. It's okay though, because <laughs> one more frost frock and you're dead. That was that. That was the thing that we did in this game. Open up. Let's see what you're regarding. Ritual Sword Talisman. Hey, I was wondering when we were gonna start finding these. Raises attack power when HP is at maximum. This might not be the worst thing. Though, my HP is usually not at maximum, but, you know, I can try to keep it that way. <laughs> the practice had died out by the age of King Consort Radigan, but remains of the arenas where ritual combat took place can still be found in every land. Ta talisman pattern after swords used in ritual combat held to honor the Earth Tree. Well, do those occur anymore? Because I'm not sure if they do. That talisman would be really good in combination with another talisman that we have yet to get. Oh, look, it's not raining anymore. Man, the game looks at its absolute best when it isn't raining. For some reason, whenever it puts on rain, it's like, oh, make everything foggy. Make it so you can't see, like, <laughs> two feet in front of your face. You can't see the awesome detail of the world. Like, even Breath of, Breath of the Wild has foggy rains, and it still looks cool there, so I'm not sure why Elden Ring just, like, it, it looks ten times worse whenever whenever it rains, which is why I'm always so upset to see it raining, because, like, it looks so cool in clear weather, and then rain is just not, it's just not as good, in my opinion. Okay, more demi-humans chilling on the cliffs. Uh, they can do what they want. I'm gonna jump down here, and we're gonna explore this camp down here. Okay. We're also gonna heal up after that, and this would be a good time for me to equip the Ritual Sword Talisman. Perhaps replacing this. There we go. So, if I can manage to land a combo of hits on an enemy without getting hit, I could increase my damage by a lot with both this talisman and the uh, Winged Sword Insignia. Speaking of talismans, we just got another one. Boosts guarding ability. Well... I feel like at some point in this playthrough, I should just equip a fucking shield and use it. <laughs> like, just so I could get that, get the shield use quota out of the way. The Knights of Landell once modeled themselves after the Tree Sentinels. Their purpose is to protect that which deserves protection, and thus the shield always comes before the sword. I didn't know they were inspired by the Tree Sentinels, the, so the Tree Sentinels came before them. Who are the Tree Sentinels? I don't know. And I don't know if I'll ever know. Well, that was a good, uh, that was a good effort of not taking any damage. Really, uh, really did great there. I should probably go take care of this ballista. Ballista before we continue further? Yeah, especially if, uh, especially if it's gonna be like that. Okay, so, the, the enemies don't have a lot of health, but they are dealing a lot of damage. And I think that's why Altus Plateau is, is, like, considerably, uh, has always felt considerably harder to me than even Southern Kaelin. I, I think it's just ever so slightly easier, but still. Okay. The damage is still high. I'm not getting the damage boost because I'm not at full health, but I don't want to waste a- I can waste a flask on it! We're in the open world! We can do that! What was that you used? Was that a perfume? That was a perfume you just used. Alright, hopefully skills are affected as well. That's 208. I don't know how much that is normally. I just watched a video that recently came out, or by recently I mean literally today as I'm recording this. It came out that explains Elden Ring's damage uh, calculation system. And it really goes to show how little I know about the weapons in this game. Like, there are so many weapons and examples and crap shown off in that video that I had never used once in my entire life. And I'm afraid I'm not going to be using in this playthrough. There. There goes my freaking health bar. 
let's fix that. Okay, this is one of those guys, like, on the bridge in Limgrave who just keeps slamming his head into the ground. Um, he also just doesn't think life is worth it anymore. That's sad. Take your Sanctuary Stone and then the five Fan Daggers, which I don't use. There's a lot of crap in this game that I don't use, and I don't know if that's a good thing or an okay thing. I mean, it... How could it ever be a good thing? But, like, you know, is it a bad thing that I'm not using weapons in the game that they keep giving me? Or is it an okay thing and I shouldn't feel too bad about it? Because, like, there's just so much crap in this game, and when so much of it is locked behind your numbers being in an arbitrary position, it's just kind of hard to get into. That's how I felt anyway. On my first on my first file, I did try to get into a lot of weapons. Like, I think the, um... Something we got from Weeping Peninsula, this, the Rusted Anchor. I tried using this, I leveled it up a lot, and I just found it to be not that great. And I guess it's because I didn't give it an affinity. I should probably be messing around with affinities more. It's just... I don't know, that, that part of the game has just always been so unapproachable for me. And I don't know if it's because I haven't bothered to try. That's probably what it is, I'll be honest. Or if it's just that some of the mechanics of this game discourage me from doing it. Sword given to the lesser giants who fought for the Erdtree during the War of the Giants long ago. Against the Giants. The lesser giants who fought for the Erdtree during the War against the Giants. Okay, so some of the giants were on their side. Makes sense. Though they have lost their minds, they stay inseparable for their swords that are in sad shape, such as the gold plating had flaked away. So the swords were once gold, and now they're that. That's, that's pretty cool. I like that design. Trolls roar. Intense roar, powerful shockwave, blows back surrounding foes. Which can be enhanced with the roars medallion. Is that what it's called? That one talisman we got way back when? Okay, who blew up? Who blew up and why? You're dead. You're dead to me. Oh my god. I- I swear I came through and killed you guys. Did I seriously miss someone? Oh my god. Get- get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, that was this camp. I think that's every treasure that we can get from it, so let's keep going, and, um, I may as well continue my thoughts on this, because, like, oh, there's a knight in there. Okay, well, um, we can get, we can bring out our magic to use against him. I, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I kind of, sort of, don't like the attribute requirement system. I don't like the upgrading system really either like sure it's cool you put a bunch of like stones into your swords and then it gets and then it deals more damage and then you you know you can keep using the same weapon throughout the whole game because later game enemies will not get too much uh will not get too hard but i feel like these systems are discouraging me from trying the smorgasbord of weapons and stuff that this game has because like you know Elden Ring is praised all the time for its amazing build diversity, and I would have to agree, looking at all the crap that's in this game, all the Ashes of War you can use, all the um, other stuff you can apply to your weapons, it's all great, but I've never felt compelled to use it because every time I do, every time let's say like, I'm, I'm just having fun with my twin blade right now, let's say I wanted to switch to the Rusted Anchor, I would first have to like, pump it full of smithing stones because every single weapon no matter how late you get it in the game is always given to you in an unupgraded state so you have to upgrade it like 10 levels before it actually does starts doing anything good against the enemies you're facing and i don't think no no the the upgrading resources totally are um reusable this guy's applied some kind of buff to his weapon his sword's all like white and shiny and then he keeps using perfume breath against me he blew me back with it just a bit ago so not only do you have to do that which is just like uh, you know you have to go use up some resources and time to just you have to pump this weapon full of crap only to get up to the highly upgraded levels and realize that it just does less damage than your current weapon and so I'm like, okay, why would I use this then? And I guess I could try to give it an affinity, but like, what if I like the skill that it has and I don't want to change it? Can I just... Can you give it an affinity without changing the skill? I don't know that. If you can, that would be great. Because like, I, I would like to do that without giving it another skill, but... Uh. And then... Like, for most of the weapons you pick up in this game, it's like, oh, sorry, you don't have 30 strength, so uh, you're, this weapon just does nothing for you. And coming from games like 
Terraria, where every single weapon you pick up, you can use, no exceptions. I've just never been that big a fan of that. It's been, it, it feels so limiting, especially at the start of the game when your stats are low and like everything requires a little bit of bump of a bump in stats to use. And it just feels kind of arbitrary to me. Like, I know it's an RPG, you're building a character that's good at certain things. I'll get into this after we talk to Melina here. I believe around the site of Grace... Yes, Bach has joined us, and I think Melina might have something to say about him. Your seamster, Bok. I see him crying from time to time. I think he misses his mother. He wants someone to tell him he's beautiful. Does being born of a mother mean one behaves in such a manner? <laughs> Wait, D didn't you just say earlier in this video that you had a mother? Or what? I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'd love to tell him that he's beautiful. Unfortunately, I don't think that's a dialogue option. I have a favor to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, instead of saying you're beautiful, I hey, can I ask you a favor? No. Master, may I ask you something? Would you mind if I called you Lord? I heard that you and the other tarnished seek the throne of the Elden Lord. Well, I know that you will be the one. And you'd make just the manner of kind-hearted lord that I'd wish for. So please, if you would, allow me to call you lord. That is fine with me. You don't say. Thank you. Thank you. My lord. My lord. My lord. Please become Elden Lord. And please let I, Bok the Seamster, remain at your side. Oh, we got a gesture for that, so I'm glad I did that. So yeah, now he'll he'll call us my lord in all of his dialogue, which is pretty cool. Can I do anything with you here? Um, we could take the cape off of the finger maiden robe. And you know, I might do that. Sure. Go ahead. I, I, I want to I wanna make you feel like you're useful, because <laughs> like... There's so few garments in this game that can be altered, or so it seems. Going already, my lord. Please do be safe on your journeys. Alrighty, well, uh, now that we're here at this grace, I think I would like to briefly head to the round table hold. I think I would like to briefly head to. Is something that I say way too much. Ah, I have been waiting for your return. I've decided to leave the round table hold after all. As I mentioned, I'm off in search of the noble gold mask. We may not meet again for some time. If there's any incantations you wish to learn, now's the moment. Stepping into the Altus Plateau is the, is the trigger for Corin to leave the round table hold in search of gold mask. Uh, I do have money. Uh, can I get all of these? Because I would like all of these just to have them. You know, I might not use them. Oh yeah, I learned that uh, Knight's Cavalry are weakest to lightning damage, which is something I have never used in this game, so maybe I could try it sometime, but I don't think I have enough faith, if any, to use it, so that might not happen. The golden order shine through you. So this music is kind of unique. This part that you're hearing right now only plays as soon as uh, the moment that you enter Altus Plateau. After it's done, it never plays again, and it just keeps looping through uh, the part that comes directly afterwards. I can't really describe it better than that, but like, you know, it's, it's just something interesting that I noticed, because none of the other uh, ambient music in the game works like that, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, you are a Landell Knight. Have we fought- did we fight one of you over in the other place there? I think we did, yeah. You are Landell Knight, which we fought in Liurnia way back when, and you were very freaking strong then, and you're not as freaking strong anymore! There's my lovely commentary showing its face once again. Hi. What- What is that buff? Is it just like, oh, I- I do more damage? Is that it? Thank you for switching back to the bow, that made yourself so much easier. Alright, well, you're down. Honestly, the- the- the knight in Liurnia might be stronger than that guy, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it appears to be getting towards sunset. 
And I think I learned I learned a couple of fun facts about the time of day, uh, the day-night cycle in this game. Apparently, if you fast travel, the day does progress by a little bit. Though I think it's like usually if you're in morning, if you're at like the very start of the day, it'll go from that to the morning stage. There's also something else about it, but first we have to listen to what this amazing guy has to say. Oh, Erd Tree. Great Erd Tree. The Golden Order itself, unwavering, stretched to the sky. Confer your guidance to our Elden Lord. To put this weary world to rights. Don't worry, it most certainly has. I know you can't see me because you're dead, but, you know, I, I am here, and I will put this weary world to rights. As you said there, good good sir, so, so beautifully. All right, I don't know how I'm gonna tackle this place, cause you ha kinda have a choice on where you want to go. You can go to the big ol' imposing looking big wall over here, or you can go over there. And both of these are pretty big, important sectors with a lot of big old good, important stuff to do. The amazing descriptors, me. You are a wonderful public speaker. <laughs> what the f What the hell is wrong with my commentary today? I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what the intended order is to do it, or if there is an intended order, there probably isn't. Um, if, in that case, I don't know which order I want to do it in, so... I... I might just decide as I go. Fortunately, there's enough stuff in the middle of the Altus Plateau that we can get to first. So, um, yeah, we'll do that. Um... <laughs> we may not see each other for some time, he says, as he's standing right here. I'm gonna pick up this map. Altus Plateau, and then I'm gonna take a look at it. Oh, man. I do like the map of this place. I, I like this little orange color, this tan orange color. It's not as beautiful looking as the actual color of the place, but still, looks pretty neat. And we can see this massive row that goes all the way up here to the big fortified place, and then a big old blotch of something over here. That's probably the rocky area. Ah, oh, look who we have here. How delightful to meet a familiar face, even after departing the round table hold. I've been doing some learning of my own since then, actually, and will happily pass it along to you. That means he has new incantations, which is great heal. Okay, that's pretty good. And lightning fortification. Follow the path that has been set for you, and you will make enemies of all others. The monks, the sorcerers, the ancient dragonites, and the scions of gold. Heed me, the lands between offers no welcome to the tarnished. I think we've already read that. The two fingers has high hopes for the tarnished, that even if they should be wounded, even, if sh even should they fall, they will continue to fight for their duty. That's what they all say, but I don't think I've ever read that before, so there we go. About the noble gold mask. I to find the noble gold mask. I suppose he'll be closer to the earth tree. The path ahead might be perilous, but tread it I shall. Since departing the round table hold, I've come to understand in my solitude how little it is I truly know. I mean, I certainly wouldn't know the location of some random guy that I hope to find. I feel like. Realizing how little it is you know is something any <laughs> freaking college student would under would uh, come to understand, because it's something I've come to understand. How little it is I truly know about real life. And about Elden Ring, to be honest. <laughs> I know so little about this game. Despite knowing, like, how the world is laid out, the locations of NPCs and whatnot, I do know very little about this game, like, as I just said earlier in this video. Oh yeah, I was gonna continue talking about that, uh, but first of all, I would like to go backwards a little bit to show off. <gasps> Look who it is! It's another goddamn Knight's Cavalry! <laughs> Stop using these enemies, please! We're not gonna fight him. Actually, though, if we're not gonna fight him, then what are we gonna do? Don't know, I don't have a plan exactly. Okay, there's a finger reader crone, I suppose we could go up the road and talk to her. Yeah, we can do that. I just want to say, the reason why I kind of find the attribute requirement system arbitrary is because it's the only thing your stats do. Like, other RPGs, other very well-renowned, very well-beloved RPGs, have more involved with their stats than these games do. 
If you say level up intelligence, then that means you can start solving complicated issues in the world, and not just that you do more magic damage. Whereas, like, with this game, I feel like all the attributes really do is change how much damage you do with weapons. And what's weird is how, even if you don't meet the requirements for uh, equipping a weapon, if you can still equip the weapon, you swing it in the exact same way, it's just that it doesn't do as much damage, because screw you. And so, like, the, the weapon is swung identically to how it is when you do have the requirements, but it just, it's just worse, because your number has to be in the right place for it to be good. And yeah, I, I don't know. There's something about that I, I just kind of don't like, but, you know, I'm sure... I mean... <laughs> From Software is included in, what, six games now, and nobody seems to care, so I think I'm the only person that has any amount of problem with, uh, with this system. So I should probably just shut up and accept it. And I have. I mean, I still enjoy these games lots, even despite the system. But yeah, I've just never been that big a fan of the attribute requirement system, because it's like, you get so many weapons, but game's like, nope, can't use them. Nope, your number has to be high enough. You have to invest super... You have to invest a huge amount in this one particular stat, or go and respec with Ranala and use up a resource and spend a bunch of time switching your entire character around to something you might not end up liking, and then you just have to go back and switch back, and it's just like... It's a bunch of hassle when I would really love to just pick up the sword and use it. That's something about games like Terraria that I love. You pick up the weapon, and you can use it! Just right away! But, and you know, Terraria is kind of a completely different game to this, so... And it would... Admittedly, it, putting that kind of system in this game might destroy the balance, it might not make the game as good in some ways. Still, just something I've never loved about these games, and I just wanted to get that out there. Oh, gee. <laughs> I didn't even, like, boo this guy. I was just standing there looking down at him intensely and he didn't notice me. Oh, man. All right. Um, tree surcoat. I think this is the first time we've seen this. Emblazon of the Front depicts the Erd Tree, does it? <laughs> if it does depict the Erd Tree, then man, the Erd Trees have gotten a lot, gotten very far in its upgrades since then. Let's get that and, oh my god, I can't. Okay. Unseen Assassins and Imp Shades. I'll get the Imp Shades, and then I'll sell a bunch of crap because you also have a cookbook I want. Lightning Pots and Roped Lightning Pots, and then this. And a couple Stone Sword Keys I don't think I'm gonna need. Scorpion Kite Shield. There's a shield with a scorpion on it. Pretty cool. A warning of surprise attacks and sudden strikes. <laughs> warning! I am going to surprise attack you! That's not true, buddy. I just bought, like, three things from you. Some assassins cannot be seen with the naked eye. Seems the Erdtree sentries once carried torches that could cast lights on these prowlers. Hmm, okay. Imp Shades. Nothing can touch the shades of imps in the hero's graveyard. Only Rosas' light can give them form. We have not seen either of the things these are talking about yet, but we might run into them shortly. Now, what do you have to say, oh amazing finger reader crone? Wherever the path goes, you'll be sad. That's the curse of Queen Merica, apparently. Alright. Man, you know, for some reason, I find serpent to be a really funny word. Because, like, it, it just means, you know, big ol' mythological snake. And yet, like, the fact that it is basically just a- it just means snake. I've always found it to be really funny, and I don't know why, but I, I like it. Serpent. Okay, there's actually more on this bridge than I thought there was. There's an item down here, as well as these guys. They're just- Hanging out, looking at absolutely nothing. It gets a bit foggy when you start to go down here. Ten golden arrows. Those seem important, but not important enough to be for me to use them. Highly effective against those who live in death and able to prevent them from rising again. I'm not sure if that has any, like, huge benefit or meaning behind it. It might just be that, like, if you kill a skeleton with it, you don't have to do the whole hit them one more time to finish them off thing. 
I do know that in Dark Souls 1, hitting uh, skeletons with a divine weapon would prevent them from reviving if a necromancer was around. I wonder if that's the same thing here with, uh, with Black Knife Catacombs. You know, these ones that had the necromancers in them. Um, hello? That's, there's, there's something sitting on the bridge here. You okay there? You okay there, buddy? That's a statue. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was, like, actually something. It was not. Overturned carriage here, and... Alright, I think I'm gonna go the other way. Because I am sure you are wondering where this thing is taking you. Will, will take you. <laughs> not is taking you. Well, where is it taking me? That's the question. We're here to find out. The sending gate just takes you to the opposite side of the bridge. Sure. <laughs> so I guess when the bridges fell in the war of, like, 1694, they just decided to replace it with sending gates that teleport you to the other side. Whatever works. And yes, this clip is definitely taking place directly after the previous clip, and there wasn't a whole section in between that I ended up having to cut out because it didn't work out. Um... Notice the clock down there. We are currently in a stage of the game known as Late Night. This is actually a really short phase of the day-night cycle, only lasting like two minutes. And supposedly, there's supposed to be special things that occur, but I just looked for them in an attempt to show them, and they didn't show up for me. So I don't know what I was doing wrong. Maybe I didn't wait around enough. Ah, whatever. We'll keep exploring Altus Plateau, and then maybe I'll come back to that at a later time. That just It's just a shame that that didn't work out. Right away, we can see a figure at the end of the bridge here, at the other end. And once again, with one statue that's perfectly fine, the other with its head cut off. I don't know why that's such like a common repeated pattern throughout the world. Hello there. How's, um, how's your day been? What, what do you do for a living? Just, um... I can't imagine it's this. Is, is this just a hobby of yours? Yes, yes, very insightful, yeah. So, um... How long have you been uh, down this line of work? Can you hear me at all? Do, do you move? Are you a statue? I'll take that as a yes. Let's see what you got here. Dragon wound grease in front of you. Was this yours? Uh, Alright. Uh, I assume I can take it. He's so entranced by the Erd Tree's mere existence that uh, he, just, he, he just doesn't know what's going on around him. He's like, oh, look. Look. A tree. Oh my god. It's a tree. I've never seen that before. Now, you are wearing a gold mask, and you do look something like the thing showed in the intro. I guess I can go tell Corin about you. You might be the one he's looking for. I don't know why he would look for you, but we can all, I can always point him in your direction. Uh, before I do, there's an item over there that I would like to go get. I can find a way to get down there. I guess I just have to summon Torrent and ride to the other end of the bridge. Um, or actually, no, there there isn't an easy way down there from here. I thought there would be. Oh, look, look who we have waiting us over there. Giant rats out in the middle of that random field. Uh, that looks like it's gonna cause fall damage. There's Grace down there, though, so I'd like to get that to have an easy teleport back over here whenever I want. Is this way better? The, other, the opposite side of the bridge? It looks like it. Like, especially from here? Okay, it, it damaged, but, you know, we're fine. It's just a little broken bone. Torrent can handle it. He's a ghost. Ghosts have broken bones all the time. I don't know. Ghosts fix their broken bones all the time. I've just decided that now. That's true ghost lore. Okay, late night actually lasts a lot longer than I thought it would, so maybe you just have to wait for a while, and then the special effects happen. Because I heard, uh, I just watched a video today that showed this off. 
Wandering mausoleums supposedly fall asleep in the late night stage. So like just before morning, they have a little nap and then they get back to randomly wandering around. But I visited the two wand wandering mausoleums that I still have up and about and neither of them slept. So I, I don't know. I don't know if there was anything I was doing wrong or maybe that video was lying. <laughs> I would hate to assume that. What? Just happened? Excuse me, that's not what- <laughs> The game's sabotaging me! <laughs> this, my Horfrost stuff is just not working for some reason. Alright. There it is. H hang on. Aim in the right direction. Yeah, there it is. Why didn't it- That is very weird. I've never had that happen, like, aside from this playthrough. I've used Horfrost stuff plenty of times in my, um, first playthrough, and it never did that. That's so weird. You've got glowy eyes. I kill you. Oh, God. I do kind of want some level ups. Okay. It, we are long overdue for a... That's not the right button. We're long overdue for a car in Slicer. Let's just use it. There we go. 408. Pick up the golden Roa. I would love something to use the golden Roa on, but I guess we'll have to find the cookbook for that. As I've just said earlier in this video. Okay. Right down here on this bridge... Actually... It might not be this item. No, it's not this item. Stimulating boluses, that's to ward off sleep. Um, unless you go into PvP, you're never gonna need that. Then I think on this bridge segment... Yes! Hidden just out of sight is a purple item! Or should I say a gold item? I don't know. Radiant Gold Mask! Now you can be the same as Gold Mask! You know, this, this kind of leads me to believe that maybe that guy just found this mask this exact mask, it just decided to put it on and then go point at the tree. But... Uh, you never know, maybe he could be the one, so let's go tell Corrin about him. And I guess I'll keep wearing the mask myself. It's it's actually really funny looking, and it, it doesn't hide my hair in any way, so I'm okay with that. Hello, it is me, Gold Mask. I have come to show you the light, the, the correct path to the Golden Order. He's not falling for it, I don't think. I mean, he saw me get off of Torrent right in front of him. <laughs> Tell the noble gold mask's whereabouts. Uh, there's a guy that I think was a gold mask imposter, but you might want to go check him out anyway. Do, do you sport with me? I'm not From sure. Description, it can be no other than the gold mask himself. Of course, of course, I knew he would be close by. Bless the Golden Order and its benevolent rays, and to you too, my sincerest thanks. Alright, he's got nothing else to say about that. May the golden or so I suppose he's gonna be headed off in that direction, and I'll be headed off in a different direction. I'm actually not sure where I want to go from here, but uh, while I'm thinking about that, I'm gonna change outfit out of view of this guy, preferably. I'm sorry, but like, okay, these make a cloth sound when you put them on. These make a metal sound, but these are the these are the only things that have visible metal. What's that about? Um. Well, you know, as aside from the mask, I look cool. I'm gonna keep the mask on though, cause it's just funny. Yeah, this looks okay. I'll go with it. And I don't think I'm ever gonna remember to wear this tree surcoat anytime soon, cause it's just kind of bland. I mean, wait, well, hold on. Literally the. Yeah, tree and beast, sir, coat. Literally, the friggin' basic enemies of Limgrave dropped something that was a little bit more unique than this one was. Hi? I do not remember you. What? There's a whole camp of omens! And I don't even remember- Okay, well, I'm thinking, uh, I'm, thinking I'm gonna lay the smackdown on them and see what item that they have. Let's do that. I'm gonna hit those spots on your back. Repeatedly. Oh my god, this this actually works so well on them. Oh man, three hammer hits lead to a stance break, but it does cost a ton of FP. So I'm only going to use it a little bit on these guys. Oh boy, we have to fight two of them. Um, wish me luck. Got him! Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so fun. Oh, but you had hyper armor. That's less fun. No, oh no, that's kick. Oh, wait, wait, they can hit each other? Wait, <laughs> they can hit each other. That's so funny. Oh, no. No, I didn't think that would hit. Somehow. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, can you just can you just kill your friend for me? Hold on. Can you just uh can you just do that? Come on, attack, attack, attack. Yeah. <laughs> Why can they attack each other? That is so weird. The groups of these guys elsewhere in the game can't hit each other, I don't think. Maybe they can, you never know. I I, I may have discovered a new secret about the <laughs> about this game. This cough will not leave me alone. But you know. If I were to go like three weeks without making any videos or streams, I might just go insane. So, um, I I'm getting back to it regardless of what my throat thinks about me. And my throat is mostly okay, honestly. I mean, the sore throat is gone. It, it keeps coming back on occasion and then leaving just as quick. Perfume bottle. That was not our first one, but I don't think we've actually looked at them. Essential vessel for crafting perfume items. The art of perfuming was, was once jealously guarded in the capital, but after the perfumers were drafted into service during the Shattering, the art became widely practiced throughout the lands between. Maybe we have. It's only our second one, but yeah. There's various potions I think you can make with those, so if you'd like to become a witch, uh, then be my guest and look out for those as well. Though, they're not very common. At least until Altus. Because I think Altus is when, like, the perfumers really start showing up. We've only seen a couple of them so far. Like, there was one in Village of Albanarix in Lyurnia. That was it. Okay. Where does this go? That goes more towards the west end up there. All right. I think I have an idea of where to go first. And I think it's gonna be in this direction. I'm gonna climb this hill. This is around the Urtree Gazing Hillside of Grace and around where we met Millicent. We could go up the hill from there. And uh, I didn't do it before, so now I'm gonna do it. The, the the Golden Roa is so hard to see among the grass, and kind of so are Sights of Grace, though. Sights of Grace are at least a little more shiny. Still, though, it looks absolutely great. Look at that golden sky. I love it. I must say, with how golden this place looks, like, Great Britain would have loved to colonize this place. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a catacomb pointer thingy, and we have a thing, and we have the beast eye quivering in my pocket. So that's important. Let's climb on upwards. 877 cash now. I'm sorry, are you seeing me all the way from there? I didn't realize your vision was that good. Pretty impressive for a dead guy. It is another Tibia Mariner. This one at least can summon something big and new. He's literally bringing... <coughs> oh my god. Can I talk about him, please? He's literally bringing in High Lord Volnir from Dark Souls 3. Back from the dead. <laughs> back from the abyss. Oh god. Okay, High Lord Volnir is gonna slap me. At least that's what it looks like. I wonder if that design is supposed to call back to that. This is also a set of ruins, so we will have stuff to explore in a bit. Okay, so not everything around here is uh, Tibia Mariner Summon, so I better keep watch out for that. Yeah, I think we have a bunch of regular enemies here, in addition to the Tibia Mariner. I think all the, all the Tibia Mariner Summons is High Lord Volnir here. Oh boy, these guys are annoying though, so... I will be happy to kill them. You know, this... With all these added enemies, this Tibia Mariner might actually prove to be a challenge. Oh, who am I saying? It's a freaking Tibia Mariner. Once again, my Horfrost stomp there didn't do anything! What's up with that? Like, what? Is it because of bad performance? Ideally, a bad performance would not cause an and uh, would not cause an attack to become less effective. Just because oh, I can't render the particle effects, therefore no attack will be had. I, I was about to be like in a bad situation there if that skeleton were to revive, but the Tibia Mariner just finished him off. What are you doing, Tibia Mariner? Have you learned nothing from your colleagues who have died? These guys are so sad. They try so hard, but just they're just not they can't keep up with any of the other bosses in this game it's so funny they're all so slow they freaking sit there and take it for the most part they try to set themselves apart by summoning in enemies that just that they end up killing with their own attacks 10 seconds later it's just what's these guys deal what's these guys damage apparently it's uh 1488 down he goes. That's another death route for us. And Tibia summons. That is not a spirit ash. That's actually like a sorcery. Summons a group of those who live in death. Oh, sorry. 
those lost in death. They don't actually want to live in death, they've been trapped and lost in death. Three skeletons will appear some distance from the caster and attack foes before disappearing. The type of long been left to wander, what they need is leadership. Unfortunately, I need 20 faith and 28 intelligence to use it. I'm actually kind of close on intelligence, but I'm still not meeting it, so yep, yeah, can't do that. Again, I would love to use all these spells. I'd love to use, like, you know, a bunch of different spells, try out some new stuff, but no, if I want to, I need to either go respec or have invested so heavily into intelligence at the detriment of everything else, including the twin blade I'm using. Then again, the twin blade I'm using scales with intelligence, so it, it might actually help. Still, though, I, I just find the weapons, the whole weapon thing in this game hard to get into. That's the end of it for me. Um, everything else about the game, though, I love. I, I do love this game a lot. As you can tell by the fact that I've put so much time into it and I'm bothering to play every single thing in it a second time. <laughs> Though, you know, truth be told, I haven't genuinely defeated every boss in this game. I haven't actually gone out and collected every last thing in my main save file. That's what I hope to amend this time, though. Uh, don't ask me why I decided to fight all those guys. I don't know either. Let's find the cellar of this place, and then let's go find the catacombs that are apparently around here. Maybe the catacombs are in the cellar! They're not, but that would be cool if, like, the, the ruins went down into a dungeon. Can you imagine that? A ruins going down into, like, a Shifra River type zone. That would be so cool. You find the cellar, and then it would just keep going down and down and down into a freaking Shifra River-like zone. That would be so cool, and, you know, now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm really upset that they didn't do it. This looks kind of important. I mean, it's overgrown. Nothing else was, so, yeah. Uh, there's actually a little interesting fact about this place, but unfortunately we can't see it right now because we don't have the map for this side of Altus Plateau. I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't think we do. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You're a little bit stronger, ain't ya? The uh, never mind. You weren't. Uh, one stone sword key needed to enter. I shall use it. <laughs> it went right through me. Didn't hit me at all. Stone sword key was lost with use. And, oh no, more skeletons. Whatever will I do? This is going to be the toughest combat challenge of all time. We aren't prepared for this. Okay, they're sending a skull after me. That's new. That's new. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, this is what I meant to do. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that felt awesome. That felt awesome to do. Unfortunately, I'm out of FP, so no longer feels as awesome. Uh, okay, that skull decided to explode instead of launch at me. I love consistency in attacks. Alright, after that extremely tough battle, our reward is... <laughs> we got the base version of this last time, and now here we are already getting the upgraded version. This just makes me wonder, why is the base version of this talisman located where it is? You have to go into crump- into freaking crumbling Faramazula, which my runes are still there by the way, I haven't died since then in order to get it and survive two extremely tar powerful enemies that are going to kill you in like two hits in order to get it. I mean, you could just run past them and go grab it, but still, it's in this like really hazardous zone and yet not these random ruins in Altus Plateau just has the upgraded version. Oh, this game's so funny sometimes with how it spreads out its upgrades. It spreads it out in like the best way that it could, I suppose, but still. You know, I think there couldn't be, like, a genuine argument made that Dark Souls 3's world design was the best for, like, a feeling of progression, because, like, a world like this is obviously really freaking cool, and I, I would definitely, I definitely prefer this world to Dark Souls 3's. And then there's also Dark Souls 1 with its, uh, cool non-linear world, and Dark Souls 2 with the similar elements, not exactly the same, though. And Dark Souls 3 is, by comparison, is very, very, very linear, but at least with that game, you could say it had very, very good progression. You never found items out of order, per se. Like, you always found it in a way that made sense. The enemies always scaled up in damage in a way that made sense. There was no jumping across a canyon into a, a place that was suddenly 50 times harder for no reason. 
I need 2,000. Even though Dark Souls 3's world design isn't necessarily, like, cool or interesting to explore or anything, well, the, the areas themselves are, but the world in general, not really. I would make the argument that it's the best if you want, like, a proper progression for your game. Uh, probably. I don't know. There's probably some way that you could put in a natural progression system into a Dark Souls 1-style world. In fact, Hollow Knight kind of does that. Kind of. Sort of. A little bit. You have the boss door right away in here and the wind jump catacombs! I saw myself step on that pressure plate and I got scared and I did not get out of the way in time. Whoops. Alright, let's see what we got down here. Um, anything off to the side? Yes, there is. There's a glove war. We're gonna go back up. We're gonna go back up and get it. I see some choppers in the next room. Around Altus Plateau, not a whole lot new is introduced in mini dungeons. It is more or less the same stuff we've seen from the rest of the catacombs and the rest of the world, just used over and over again. Just used in a bunch of new creative ways, and used in some more challenging ways. It's not terrible, but I would understand if, like, at this point, they start to become less interesting to some of y'all. If, if they haven't been uninteresting to you already. Ow, God. Okay. Um, I need to take you out quicker than that, because uh, these guys are actually using the whole secret, like, uh, lightning AoE damage effect thing, where you can see when the lightning things land, they explode in a little burst around themselves. Now, it's not actually as big of a blast as I think it was in, as I think it was in Dark Souls 1, but it certainly lingers for a long time, I can tell you that much. There we go, full group bloom. There's only one big chopper thing in this room, and it doesn't take you up anywhere special, so we'll just keep going down. You know, I just had flashbacks just now, for a reason I don't know, to a game. I, th I think, I, I guess it's like the stony enemies I'm fighting inside of a cave. A weird little game that I played on Congregate when I was younger called Island es Escape 3D. It was made in Unity, and it was this really, like, I don't want to be too mean to it, but it was this, like, crappy game where it, it was an open-world kind of survival game where, like, you had to escape an island by completing side quests. That, that was the main objective. You had to complete, like, sent ten side quests for NPCs around the place. And, like, the game's graphics were... It, it looks like they were made by a kid, and they probably were... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anyone knows about that game, uh, but it's just like a memory of it suddenly flooded back. It was honestly kind of like a creepy game because the enemies were like these weird stone statues with no animations. Or, or I think some of them had animations, but like most of them didn't. They just kind of slid towards you with this empty gaze and it looked really creepy. And uh, I, I remember them, like, jump-scaring me sometimes. I, I played that game a bit. I never finished it, but, uh, you know, it was a free game, so I can't give it too much whack, but it was just so weird. It was this weird little, this weird little crappy game, probably made by some solo dev for, like, a little passion project, you know. I wanted to lure this Landell Knight over to these guys. I don't know what this guy's doing down here in the catacombs, but he's here because he goes into battle against the slimes and the zombies, I'm pretty sure. And I think there's a chance of the slimes killing him, and I want to see if they're going to do that. You know what I haven't used enough? This weapon. <laughs> my god, that does so much damage. Oh my god, that does so much damage. I love it. I actually want to wait and see if this guy will attack the zombies. Uh, he's, he's doing pretty well against the slimes. I think he got hit for some amount of damage. If only I could see... Excuse me. Get off of me so I can see. Yeah, oh my god, he's actually kind of dying to them. Wait, look at his health. He's, he's getting low. <laughs> These little sludge piles are challenging him. Okay, is he focused on me again? No, don't be focused on me. No, no, no. I am not your biggest threat right now. I am not your biggest threat in this room right now. What the hell was that? Was that a trap? Alright, well, they nearly killed him. They got him down to one hit. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Oh, it was a trap. The pressure plate's under the floor. You know what I said about how pressure plates in this game are easy to avoid because you just stay out of the center of the room? And then I accidentally step on two pressure plates in this dungeon? Um, yeah. Um, 
egg on my face. Right there. Okay. There's another one, though. We'll just stay to the side from that. How many stones are... How many stone sword keys do I have? I'd like to check before I open this, too. All right, we can do it, then. The fogs appear to be obscuring this. <laughs> Why'd I say that so loudly? <gasps> this! The lightning scorpion charm! It's, uh, I think we already have one of these. Raises lightning attack power, lowers damage negation. I think we have another one of those that does it for a different attack power. I think the magic one of those is given to you by Celevis if you progress his quest line. So unfortunately, we're not going to be obtaining that one. Oh god, those guys are still scary. Uh, oh, we have, we have, we have big room, big room, big room, get big room. Nope! Oh my god, barely, barely. Holy shit, no, we just stop, stop, do not. Uh, you're, I'm not going to die to an imp after I just barely survived that. You're like, you're like all cracked looking. Does that make a difference for like health or stats of any kind? Probably. Not sure what the difference would be. Oh, there's the boss lever guarded by Landel Knight. Um, I'd like to kill you first. The, all right, never mind. You're a piece of crap. I'm gonna go fight the knight instead. Or not. Oh my god, you fuckers. You fuckers and the- you delayed attacks! First time I've died this episode, man. It was a long time coming. That attack where they have the big two-handed sword raised above their shoulder for, like, forever. And you never know when they're gonna release it. And when they do release it, they don't have any kind of wind-up, they just do it. Probably my least favorite of their attacks. Speaking of redundant speech, which was not the last topic I was talking about, but it was a topic that I brushed upon in this video. I say probably a hell of a lot. <laughs> I say it more often than most YouTubers say to like and subscribe. Which you should do, by the way, if you're enjoying this content. I see you there now. How did I miss you before, honestly? And how did I miss that pressure point? <laughs> if it's not one thing, then it's the other thing. Or attach it. Okay. I think there's somewhere I can go behind the platform first. I like to go there first. Yeah, you! I can get rid of you right away! Or not. Almost. Almost, yep, okay. Check for our hidden wall, there's not. Here, just so that nobody gets... So that nobody gets mad at me for mispronouncing illusory, I'll call, just call them hidden walls to get around it. Then I can't be wrong, because I know how to pronounce hidden. It's just, I don't know, it's one of those things where I know it's the wrong pronunciation, but I like it because it sounds cooler. Like Terraria. That, that's how I think about with Terraria. Terraria is the wrong way to say that game's name. But, like, you know, it is ter it is supposed to be pronounced Terraria, but I like Terraria a lot more. And I don't really know why, I don't know, I just, I've always liked it. I like pronouncing things the British way, I guess. Terraria. <laughs> like when I watch Chippy Gaming all the time, his voice is like in my head now. Terraria. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get a backstab on you. Yeah, successful backstab. Dark Souls 3 would never have given that to me. All right. I'm gonna think I'm gonna lay down the hammer on this guy. Let's go. Oh, oh man. Oh, damn, you have voice. Okay, um... Or you have, uh, anti-stagger, is what I'm gonna call that. Because that's not really poise. Poise is the thing that makes you stance break. I guess you could call it stance, but but it's referred to as poise in the game. Whatever. Land of Light Greaves. Do those have anything interesting to say, or is it just, this is some knight's pants? It basically just said, this is some knight's pants. We've opened the boss door, and now, uh, we backtrack all the way there, I guess. I guess I could check for illusory walls in here first. Alright, that confirmed it. <laughs> Ranged illusory wall checking. What? The, the platform started moving before I even stood on it. Okay, then. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot. I forgot. Before we go back to the boss lever. Uh, hi. <laughs> okay, that guy's doing magic, but yes, there is this section down here. 
which should have something special. Or maybe even some things special. Wow, there's multiple things. There's also another pressure plate yet again. I'll just stay out of the way of that. Oh. Crabs. Yes, that's what I expected to find out here. We finally found Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook. Wha they didn't even let me open the shortcut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of them died somehow and I didn't even land a hit. I had nothing to do with that. Oh my god, he can climb ladders. I didn't know that. Oh shit. Okay. May maybe it is the best idea for him to be distracted by the sludge piles. It's funny, because I, I don't recall any enemies in Dark Souls 3 being able to climb ladders, so I, I think that might be something new they added in Elden Ring. I could be wrong about that, though. This time it was neither things! <laughs> there we go. Should have gravitated to this first, but I didn't know the crabs would do that much damage. It occurs to me, I have yet to fight a lobster in this game. I drove past them all the time in Liernia, yet I have never actually stopped and fought one. Maybe it's time to change that after this catacomb? <laughs> oh my god. They're still after me. The zombie guys are still seeing me. I'm like, I'm in the next two states over. They're in Tennessee, and I've traveled up to freaking Missouri. And they're still after me. I wouldn't have been able to fast travel regardless, but it's it's just so weird how long they stay on you. All right, whatever. Seriously, I, I'm in front of the boss fog at this point. Give it up, guys. What What's wrong with you? Those are some dedicated zombies. There we go. Who do we have here? Okay. So he has a lightning tail and is in a room with water, so the lightning will be a little bit more powerful because it'll radiate out in a circle. Otherwise, it's an Earth Tree Burial Watchdog. There's nothing new here. I think I might just cut through this. It is simple, and it is fun, but there is a reason that it was the first boss we ever fought in the game. Glove War Picker's Bell Bearing 1. Okay, this should give us Grave Glove War, I should, I shall assume. Yes, Gla Grave Glove War level 1, 2, and 3. We have the Gl Ghost Glove War version of this Bell Bearing uh, turned in already. Uh, that's Wyndham Catacombs. It was a thing. It was just kind of a bunch of the same catacomb mechanics that we've seen cobbled together but they weren't as interesting. And there was a lot of lightning. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the round table hold is starting to feel really empty. At least Master Hugh, Garoderica, and Gideon are still here. And the two fingers, if you want to count them. That door wasn't open before. Well, there we go. There's our Grave Glove Wart. And, um... Where might this be? And who might you be? I don't like the looks of this. Have you ever felt the curse? With your whole being? Buddy, that is a terrible pickup line. Life itself. Feared and despised by all. The reviled blessing. <sighs> Apparently not. You are but a lamb. A stranger to the farm and ignorant of your own ignorance. You no longer interest me. I've been long without peace. Don't spoil my quietude. Gladly. I'd rather never talk to you again. That guy is the loathsome dung eater. It's our first time seeing him and... He's shit. 
Literally. He's just nothing but a shitty person. <laughs> like, absolutely nothing redeemable about him at all. When, like, we go up and talk to him and that's the first thing he says? <laughs> Come on. Why is this broken? How, how is this broken? I'll break the other one to create order and um, restore it to the world. I think you have something to say about him. There's something you should know. I need to warn you about something. A little while ago, someone started lurking in the wing on the opposite side of the round table. And I can hear, from all the way over there, the howling and wailing of spirits in fear of a curse. I can even hear the repulsive twisted malice in itself. A plethora of spirits in an unceasing cacophony. I can't even imagine. How much suffering inflicted to who knows how many souls. Not even the grafting caused anything like this to happen. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong, but please. <laughs> Why was the dung eater given the grace? He was among the many who were given the grace at the beginning of the game. Why was he given it? There's nothing redeemable about him at all. And yes, I will very much keep my distance. Mostly. I mean... I'll show off a little bit more about him. Only a little bit, though. Because, uh, the rest of him I'm not interested in. We're going lobster hunting! Is the accent that I feel like people who kill lobsters would have. I don't know why. <laughs> what makes me think that? I don't know, but either way, we're gonna go find a lobster and kill it. Here's one! Okay, that did not take very long. I was worried that I would be wandering around this lake for forever. Let's go, buddy! I shouldn't add my own battle music. Elden Ring takes care of that for me. Elden Ring adds battle music for me. Oh god. Okay. Gonna. That was impressive. I didn't know you could jump backwards like that. How do you expect people to eat you if you keep doing that? Man, wasn't there like. I, I saw a video on YouTube about like someone on TikTok who just fucking like killed a lobster live? The lobster was alive, and, and he was going to eat it. He made that perfectly clear. He was just going to eat this lobster. And then he just fucking stabs the thing when it's clearly a lo- Oh, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? What? Uh, <laughs> um, okay, enough about that. The lobster transformed into a grafted scion. The shit? Is this one of those transforming enemies? I just discovered it accidentally. <laughs> Okay, oh well, I guess we can fight you. I'm gonna bring out my strong spells, though. Anyway, yeah, like, in the video, the lobster can be seen moving around. It, like, reacts to him as he, uh, shows it off to the camera. And then later he just fucking stabs it on camera, and I'm like, why would you film that? That is so... Oh, uh, well, I, I mean, that's what people do when they want to eat lobsters, right? You, you catch one and you kill it. It's unfortunate, but it must be done. But, like... For like a TikTok video? I don't know if that's... It just doesn't... It just felt so wrong. Alright, that was interesting. That was... I'm glad I did that, because that made this whole venture like really interesting, actually. That was cool. <laughs> I just went out to kill a random lobster, and I happened upon the one that happened to be a transforming enemy. That is some dumb luck that I cannot believe I possess. Back to the Road of Iniquity side path, as the Site of Grace is known as. We are just below the bridge where Gold Mask, I assume, is. So we're gonna see if Corrin has made it here. And then... I don't know if we're gonna... Okay. There are a few villages around here with windmills. That's probably the signature landmark of Northern Altus, is the, uh, the various windmill villages. Oh, I see a Scarab. Well, I better go over there real quick then. I'm sorry, but was that 404 damage? That was 194. That was not 404 damage, it's just the motion blur made it hard to see. You understand. All you motion blur haters understand. I'm fine with motion blur, it, it doesn't look that bad to me. Though I will say, it does make it tough to get good, like, screenshots for thumbnails. There's been so many cool, like, frames of animation that I've wanted, but are so blurry because of motion blur. I, I guess that's why some people don't like it. Increases damage negation for all affinities except physical for both the caster and nearby al allies. Hold to continue praying and delay activation. In the beginning, everything was in opposition to the Erd Tree, but through countless victories and war, it became the embodiment of orders. So the Erd Tree had to fight for its uh, rulership of the lands between. That's actually kind of interesting. Um, well, 
This isn't a village more as it is like a single house, so I guess we can make a brief stop. Or is it? Oh no, th this totally is a village. Now, somewhere inside of it actually should be... Um, um okay, well, you know, I, I was looking for a grace, but the they, they don't have one. A sign of grace? We don't have that around here, you imbecile! Get out! We will return sometime. Probably next time. We can do that next time, I'm pretty sure. I'm, pr I, I'm pretty sure we could explore the world next time, you know, explore this part of the land <laughs> in the next video. I'm pretty sure that's within the realm of possibility. Aha, uh -huh, we can see him. Hello, Corin. Have you managed to get any words out of this guy? Because I couldn't. We meet yet again. Thanks to you, I have become acquainted with the noble gold mask himself and taken my place by his side, as you can see. Have no fear. I will still teach you incantations as before, though we must do so quietly, such that we not disturb the great master's cogitation. You, you actually did manage to talk to him. Quite impressive. How'd you do that? Is, is it through some, like, psychic mind powers that I needed to level up faith to do? The master is always deep in contemplation. While I frantically attempt to record his wisdom, the movement of his finger... You're seeing movement? Though I am yet to comprehend even the daintiest morsel of his wisdom, I know that this, this is my life's calling. The Golden Order has bestowed me, talentless as I am, the great duty of documentarian. Very fascinating, indeed. He's learned something new. Discus of light. This is a ring of light and fires it forwards. The ring of light returns to a position close to the caster before disappearing. This is from Dark Souls 3. It's the way of white corona thing that Slave Knight Gale uses on you. A gift from the young Mikola to his father Radigan. Uh, I guess I could buy Great Heal. I'd, uh, I won't use too many runes because I would like to start leveling up. I'm getting a lot of runes from this place, though. It, it is very... It's paying me very good. So, you discovered your lifelong career is to stand next to a guy who's really interested in trees and read the rhythm of his mo finger movement or whatever. But, hang on. Is, is his finger actually moving? Okay, he's like... He's swaying back and forth. And apparently you can read stuff from that? Gold Mass is kind of a weird character, I'm not gonna lie. I, d I don't really know what to make of him, to be honest. Am I doing it right? <laughs> I wish I could do that for longer. Look, a tree! <laughs> Alright, I'm done messing around. Let's get a move on! Where to next? Okay, looking at my time, I think whatever I do next is going to be the last thing we do in the video. I don't know how long this video is going to be. There's quite a large section in the middle I'm going to have to cut out, so um, we could be like uh, an hour and 20 minutes in uh, of the edited thing, just like before. Oh, are you nobles about to go see the noble gold mask? Well, he's more noble than you are, so or something. That was a great roast, wasn't it? It's just a random stray dog here. Um, well, we're gonna make that not be the case anymore because those dogs suck as enemies. I think it is like a genuinely, a genuine community accepted thing that the dogs in the Dark Souls games are like consistently the worst enemies in the games. <laughs> like nobody likes them. I, I haven't heard a single person who likes them as enemies. And though I am like a bit better at fighting them now, I am definitely not one of those people. I, I do not like dogs very much. Okay, so down into this dense forest we go. We can see by the dotted trees. Now, hang on. Okay, it's actually not quite as dense as Mistwood. It's funny how this forest is depicted as just a bunch of scattered trees, whereas this one, Mistwood, down in Limgrave, has, like, a bunch of color added to it. And I've just remembered something I've been meaning to talk about, meaning to bring up since literally episode 9. So, um, I was watching, um... Gino Machino's uh, no-hit runs of this game. He's made a few with, like, various challenges and rules set. And I have to say, it was pretty funny watching a pro Elden Ring player in one of his runs. Um, I think he was, like, talking about an item that he could find somewhere. One of the chat members said, it's in Mistwood. And he goes, what's Mistwood? 
I, I know that Mistwood is not, like, named on the map and that this is an open-world game. That was, like, 50 locations you have to memorize. It it's hard to keep this stuff in mind, but still, like, a pro Elden Ring player who has no-hit the game, like, 12 times under various conditions in really awesome ways, all while being, like, very chill out and level-headed throughout it, <laughs> doesn't know where an area of the game is. I just, I, I love that. It, it's funny. No, no hate to him, of course. Like, I, I totally understand not being able to remember every last little thing about this game. Uh, instead of Pearl Drake Talisman, let's put this on. We're gonna need that. That was quite a lot of death blight I accrued, and I do not want to die. Somewhere in this forest should be a grace, so that'll be my first destination. Oh, wait. There's also something else in this forest that I kind of wanted to see from a different angle. So, very briefly, I am going to head this way, and we're gonna go this way and see if we can't see it. This church down here. It's right along the side here. I don't think I want to go in there for the time being. That'll be something for next time, probably. Instead, I would like to go past it. And then, take notice of that! <laughs> Check that out! That looks like it came straight off of N64. Okay, from the zoomed-in view, not so much, but look at that. <laughs> That's a freaking N64 building, you can't tell me otherwise. It looks somewhat like a rise, though. The... Were you that upset by the insult? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way! Come back! I wanted to explore you! <laughs> yeah. The rise disappears when you get close to it. Interesting. Oh. Okay, right next to the uh, Road of Iniquity Site of Grace, there is that carriage. I'll come back to that later. Though I think I first should probably mark the fact that it exists. I'll probably have found it eventually. We're gonna approach the forest from this angle this time, and oh dear, we have another one of you. So, these guys that I've completely uh, failed to mention up until this point, they have absolutely disgusting looking faces, and they try to throw up Death Blight on you. And then they swing sticks at you if you get too close. And they completely fail at hitting you, apparently. And they are joined by the slugs from Farron Keep in Dark Souls 3. Literally, I, th I think that's the same model and everything. But these guys shoot Death Blight at you. At least I think the thing it shot wasn't green, so that's just what I assume. Interesting uh, to realize, though, in Elden Ring, poison is green, whereas in Dark Souls, it's purple. Or in Dark Souls 3, at least, it's purple. It might actually be green in Dark Souls 2, so yeah, good thing I said Dark Souls 3. It's actually green in Dark Souls 2. And then it's like some terrible brown color in Dark Souls 1. I don't, I don't know uh, what exactly color, what exactly the color is. That's a piece of the Great Bridge. Do you have any items on you? You do. Three lumps of flesh. Can't say I expected anything to be next anything better to be next to one of those things. Somewhere down here. Uh, down here. <laughs> there should be a site of grace, and I would like to visit it. There we go, there it is. I think this is the only one down here, so once we uh, get this, we can start exploring. Okay, let's see. We got a minor Ur tree up here, which we have been seeing this whole time. It's hard to see in the fog, but it is there. And then we have the rise that was embarrassed and vanished. I think to end this video, we're gonna go check out the minor Ur tree. Let's hop on toward and head that direction. Oh boy, all these guys are surrounding it though. These guys are replacing the usual guardian guys. Or are they? I, I might be remembering the, gu the the Guardian guys are around this mi this one. We'll see when we get up there eventually, if I could find the, find the way around. Oh, there's a crashed carriage. Oh, this is where I came down from that one end of the bridge. Alright, um, there's loads of these guys. Man, they, they take a while to kill. Not as long as, like, a giant troll or anything like that, but oh. So... Hang on, there's ruins here. Do these have a cellar? I, I actually can't remember if they do or not. Either way, that is most definitely not an Erdtree avatar. Woodfolk ruins. So, okay, they do. This is a ruin, so we are going to have to find a, a cellar somewhere. Oh, you know what? Okay. Two things. I completely forgot to look at the cookbooks. Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 1. Holy crap! Lightning Grease, Slaying Arrows, Lightning Bolts. Cool. And then, number 19 of this. 
sweet raisin, and warming stones. We can actually craft warming stones now, and sweet raisins. Does that mean? Oh, yes. Torrid, we have sweet raisins now. Here you go. <laughs> Yay. All right, now I hear Scarab. And I would like to know where it is. It's, it's right here. <laughs> it's right here. That wasn't a very big challenge, and that was it. Then I think I'd like to go find the, um... Stellar of these ruins before we take on the giant man over there. Skill of the avatars to protect minor ur trees. Drop up high in the air and crash down on the ground ahead. The resulting pratfall sends golden shockwaves in all directions. So, you know, the big jump up in the air and land, that's what that one is. Interesting that you find it around this minor ur tree, which doesn't have an ur tree avatar around it, but instead has giant man. Invigorating white cured meat. That'll increase um, robustness for bleed and frost. Or maybe it'll increase maximum health? Maybe? <laughs> that could be something it does. I actually don't know. Let me, let me check. But I feel like the cured meats are for... Yeah, yeah. They're for status effects. Robustness. Y'all got a basement? I'm not fighting them too much just because they are a bit dangerous. They give lots of death blight and... You know, they're fairly slow moving otherwise. Is that a basement? That is. Okay, okay. I mean, we found the cellar, so let's go get it. I don't recall going down here in my main file, to be honest, so this might be something new for me. We'll see. Okay, not a trap. Wrath of Gold. Golden Shockwave knocks back nearby foes. So, is this just Wrath of the Gods from Dark Souls? <laughs> this incantation was discovered when the Elden Ring was shattered and was feared as a sign of the Urtrae's Wrath. I have a feeling it was actually discovered in another universe somewhere, but, you, you know, uh, technicalities. I, I actually don't know why I'm attacking them. Uh, I just am. Let's use... Let's use some Rock Sling. Or maybe, actually, no. Let's use Karian Slicer. Let's see how this does. Oh, and speaking of which... Which, by the way, Karian Slicer's doing awesome, as always. Can I use Karian Greatsword? I think I might have enough intelligence for it. Uh, first, though, let me glintstone arc these guys to death. What? Is it- do you, why'd you just, like, dash that way? What? I've never seen them do that. Like, quick dash in a direction. Oh, God. Th you're vomiting through the wall. That's not very nice. Oh, hi. Okay, the other guy's too far away. Glintstone Arc is still good. No, 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 no. Uh, if you don't remember, Death Blight kills you if you let the bar fill up. Death Blight is the status effect these guys are giving me. So yeah, this is dangerous. Um, feel free to blast the wall instead of me. Thank you very much for doing that. That was uh, very nice of you. you. You've been stuck behind this pillar the whole time. What are y'all doing? You know, like, you are somewhat dangerous, but y you're not very brave, I don't think. You're underestimating your own skill. Okay, there's a thingy there that will summon a dude that takes you to a cave. Thing is, though, said cave is literally on the map, so no need for that. <laughs> we don't have to watch him walk all that way very, very slowly. Okay, minor ur tree. We are around the place now. Two beast blood. I'm glad I spent the time getting that. There are guardians around it. Very weird. Okay, well, I'm going to set this back to normal. Excuse me. Uh, you're poison. I, I didn't know you guys could use poison. Golden sunflower. Not a tarnished golden sunflower, but a real golden sunflower. At the foot of the Ur tree, they retain their color along with a powerful holy essence. Oh, I, th I thought that was a tarnished one. This here is Wormface. That's genuinely his name. I love it. Um, okay, yeah, he's basically just a big version of the small guys we've been fighting throughout the whole thing. Uh, he gives lots of death blight, but he has a really funny, weird, and also annoying ability uh, as his health goes down, which his health is not going down at all right now because I am not making it go down. That is subject to change, however. Alright, we're gonna run out of the way of the vomit. Are you... 
thank you for taking care of that guy for me. Man, that was really nice of you. <laughs> you even gave me flasks. Wow. <laughs> Word face is surprisingly uh, generous. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's bad. That's bad. Ah, I death blighted. At least we get to see what happens when you get death blighted. Yep, it's what happened to Rogier way back in Stormvale. These guardian guys are probably the most annoying thing about this fight. This fight is fairly challenging compared to the usual Urchery avatars. Wormface is a tough foe. All right, at least I can kill these guys in like a few hits. Doesn't take very long, and then okay, Wormface is attacking by then, but still. So I think if you're using magic like I am, you want to try to get it to hit. You want to try to get the projectiles to hit his head. That takes the most damage. Unfortunately, Ice Crack has a fucking puny range, so I guess I'm just gonna go up a close. Oh look, he's got Death Blight around his legs. That's great. Oh my god. Lot of damage. Lot of damage. Yeah, it's like I say, it might be slightly easier than Southern Kaled, but enemies here still pack a punch. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, no, no need to get that close to me. Is that a grab? No, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. What's that item? I want that. What's that item? Oh, Guardian Greaves! Uh, that's the first time I've had those. Finally, I can actually have something to go with their chest plate. Alright. Um, I might just want to heal right now. Yeah, I have my flask refill from killing the Guardians, so we can, we can definitely heal right now. Slam! Oh my god. Okay, he's starting to grab, and then he just keeps going. He grabs, he tries to grab you, like, five times in a row, and it's so funny. I love it. <laughs> I, I don't know why he tries for so long. Oh god, 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 oh god. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try using Rock Sling against him. I'll see if this will stance break him. Yeah, you're gonna head headbutt me. You're not headbutting anyone. I'm gonna rock butt you because I hit you in the butt with the rock. Get it? Get it? Um, I'm actually surprised that didn't hit me. Came very, very close. I'm using Rock Slam because these projectiles have unlimited range, so I can stay as far away from him as I need to to avoid the death blight. And now I'm dying. <laughs> by very stupid errors. Do not get picked up by him. The grab attack hurts a lot. Okay. Gotta get we gotta get out of the way of it before I heal. <laughs> Man. Oh, he's low, but Oh, he's really low now. And he's dead! That actually went pretty well. Usually that guy is much more challenging for me. Ooh, 10,000 runes. I think I have enough to level up. Crimson Spill Crystal Tier and Speckled Hard Tier. Let's check those out. That was the boss of the minor Erd tree, so we get the crystal tiers for it. Crimson Spill temporarily boosts max HP. Finally, we have this. And then Speckled Hard Tier, resulting concoction, raises all resistances, and heals all status ailments. That is good. And I think I might use that. Instead of my usual, like, boost damage for a little while, I think I might want to equip that, because that is good. That's pretty good. It, it'll, like, cure your poison or your Scarlet Rot without having to use up a thing. Though, of course, you only have one use of it, but still. I'm gonna go here. It will reset the enemies, but it won't reset the boss, because that's not how bosses work. On the note of having the new crystal tier, I'm gonna boost my vigor a little bit more, so it will get a little bit more out of it, I, I think. I'm not really sure. Let's put that, uh, nope, not that. Let's put that speckled, uh, hard deer into there right now, and we'll check out Crimson Spill eventually. I kind of like to imagine that whenever I... Okay, <laughs> I'm done with this. <laughs> there we go, back to actually something good-looking. I like to imagine that whenever I quit the game, my character just, like, stops off and takes a nap right on this spot until I come back. And taking a nap down there, surrounded by the grunts of those things, not a very pleasant experience, so we're going to end the video up here instead. Next time on Elden Ring, I will return down there to continue exploring stuff like this rise, this cave, and uh, all the other stuff around, and then we'll just keep going throughout the rest of Altus Plateau. We're in a new region, so our next objective is to just wander and do whatever. <laughs> that is the formula that the series goes by. Thank you all for watching, if you did, and as always, I will see you all in the future.